Welcome to Canon Conversation number 553. Today's question, is it okay to secretly be a Christian in order to preserve your own life? And I think this question probably comes from, of course, most people read the red letters of Jesus. He says, whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever lose his life for my sake will find it. That's not really talking about physically, although it could be. And that's really talking about spiritually speaking. It's you have to give up your own flesh life. Just like Jesus says, not my will, but thine be done. The idea in order to get eternal life is that you need to um, forget about your own self-righteousness, trying to preserve your own life that way and instead recognize your sin, believe the gospel in order to be saved. That's what uh, primarily he's talking about is, if you're trying to preserve your own life, well then you, then you're doing all these works to try to work your way into heaven. But if you are willing to lose your life, then you find it, meaning that you, you stop trying to do your own works to make it into heaven. The rich young ruler in Matthew 19 says, Good master, what good thing shall I do to inherit eternal life? See, this was a guy who was trying to earn his way to heaven, preserve his own life. And so Jesus says, you give up your own pursuit of self-righteousness or trying to work your way into God's kingdom. And instead, you lose it. You say, you recognize your sin. You recognize your own righteousness is as filthy rags. And you, in the current dispensation we're in, you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin. So when you do that, then you lose your life, you give up on your life. Paul said in Philippians 3 that I count all but loss, I count it all but dumb for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus. So. You've got, um, you give up your own pursuit of righteousness and you trust in God to give you His imputed righteousness. That's how you preserve your own life. Now, what Jesus is also talking about though is physically speaking, there would be the mark of the beast and the image of the beast halfway through the tribulation period. and. Revelation 14, 9 through 11 says that if you take the mark or you worship the image of the beast, then you will have your part in the lake of fire. And so in that respect, you know, physically speaking, there may be people who try to preserve their own life. They won't, they won't admit that they're Christians, that they believe the gospel um, because they're afraid if they, if they do that, then they um, will they won't be able to eat because they won't take the mark of the beast, so they won't be able to buy or sell. And then they may be killed by the Antichrist for not bowing down to the image of the beast. And so you know, if you're in that situation, then, it, then what you're doing is you're trying to preserve your own life physically in order to, but, but then you're a Christian secretly, meaning you don't profess that you believe in God and trust in Him for His imputed righteousness, but you, but you are trusting in, uh, but but you are uh, pledging your soul to the devil by bowing down to the image of the beast. So, if that's what you're doing, uh, you're secretly a Christian. You won't admit it because you're afraid of being killed for not bowing down to the image of the beast. So you bow down to the image, but you're still a believer. Well, in that case, that's a little different because that's the unpardonable sin. Jesus Christ did not die for those who would bow down to the image of the beast. That's the eternal security program of Satan. And so you can't... Now, we can't do that today. Today you don't have to worry about that as a Christian today. Um, the rapture will take place before the image of the beast and the mark of the beast are instituted by the Antichrist because that happens halfway through the tribulation period and we are raptured up before the tribulation period even starts. 
So we don't have to worry about that today. Um, so you think, well, what about today then? Um, you know, if, if it comes down to it, which it seems like there is more and more persecution with Christians, especially in other countries, maybe in the Middle East, if you're an Islamic country, if you um, renounce Islam and you trust in Jesus' death as atonement for your sin, well, then you can, they, you know, they may, if you admit that, then they could kill you for doing that. So is it okay in that situation to uh, try to preserve your own life by being not letting anybody know you're a Christian? And we know today there is no unpardonable sin. We know that today when you trust in Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection as atonement for your sin, you're given the gift of eternal life. So that means there's nothing you can do to lose it. So you could... You could renounce Christ and renounce the Bible publicly and you would still have your salvation. You wouldn't lose it. Jesus says, well, what about when Jesus says that he would, if you do not confess men before, confess me before men, neither will I confess you before my Father. Uh, again, that is related to Israel and specifically for the Antichrist. That here is Israel called by God's name. They are God's people, and they stand and they stand before the image of the beast, and they deny Christ and bow down to the image of the beast. Well, then Christ is going to not deny them before the Father because they don't get saved until the end of the tribulation period, according to Acts three nineteen through twenty one, and also First Peter one around verses seven through nine. They receive the salvation of their souls at Jesus' second coming. So they have a conditional salvation, conditioned upon them enduring unto the end, meaning that they uh, remain faithful to Christ, meaning that they don't take the mark of the beast or worship the image of the beast. Uh, they're going to sin, they're going to break the law. Uh, Christ died for those sins, but he didn't die for the sin of um, not confessing uh, Christ before men uh, in terms of uh, bow, if you bow down to the mark of the beast or take the image of the beast, then that sin is not covered. Hebrews 6 says, that you see, that you crucify to yourselves uh, the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame in that case. But in the dispensation of grace, and since we'll be raptured up before then, uh, Romans 5, 9 says, you are now justified by his blood. Verse 11 says, you have now received the atonement. And so you can't lose your salvation. So today, in terms of salvation, if someone is going to kill you, if you will not renounce your, um, your faith, well then, you can't lose your salvation by renouncing your faith. However, that's not really the issue. The issue is once you're saved, 2 Corinthians 5.20 says we are ambassadors for Christ. And so we should be leading people to be saved and coming into the knowledge of the truth now that we've believed the gospel and are saved. So while you wouldn't lose your salvation if you decide to uh, say that you don't believe in Jesus, death, burial, and resurrection is atonement for your sin in order to save your, uh, in order so that you continue to live on this life, this earth, as Christians, we should not make that decision like that. We're ambassadors for Christ for people to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. Paul says it's better to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. He says, for to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. So if I live, I have the opportunity to allow Christ to live in me. Others can see Christ and they can be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. But if I die, it's gain because now I get my eternal life and I get my position in heavenly places. Those Christian martyrs back when it came to uh, translating the Bible into the common language of the people, John Wycliffe, John Huss, um, Martin Luther, um, you know, William Tyndale, those people back five, six hundred years ago, they um, came to that point. They could, they wouldn't lose their salvation if they decided to renounce Christ. But if they 
um, if they didn't, if they still confirmed their faith, then they were burned at the stake. A lot of them were tortured. And what that does is it shows others when that happens. Again, they wouldn't lose their salvation, so people would say, well, why don't I just go ahead and save my life? But the problem is your life really is who you are in Christ, your eternity. That's what, ma that's what really matters. This life here is only temporal, temporary. And so what are you going to do if, you, if you're a Christian? You know, Romans 8 talks about that uh, we groan within ourselves waiting for the redemption to wit the redemption of our, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our bodies. Once you're saved, you're given the spirit of, of God's Son, whereby we cry, Abba, Father, dear Father. And so once you're saved, you have that relationship. Now, on the flesh, you may decide that you are going to you know, live for yourself and not allow Christ to live in you. But in the spirit, your spirit is groaning and travail over the fact that you make decisions based on the lust of the flesh. And so here's the spirit of Christ within you crying, Abba, Father. And then here you are renouncing Christ or renouncing God. So, yeah, you saved your life, but now you've got turmoil over going against the Spirit of Christ that's within you. And also, you didn't really save your life. Yeah, okay, so they didn't kill you right now. But, you know, you're going to die anyway. It don't matter. Lazarus, he died. And uh, Jesus, he rose from the dead. Lazarus, Jesus had, had Jesus, Jesus had Lazarus rise from the dead. But guess what? He died later on. Maybe he lived another 30 years. I don't know. But what does that mean? Hezekiah, he was sick. He was going to be sick unto death. And God says, after Hezekiah prayed and asked for a longer life, God says, I give you an extra 15 years. And in the 15 years, he denied the Lord. And he, uh, you know, worshiped, got into idolatry there at the end of his life. So that extra 15 years actually hurt him. And even if you do, you say, well, I want to live longer so I can share Christ to others. Well, yeah, and that's a good goal, and I'm sure the Spirit of Christ within you wants to do that. But if that's your real goal, then you won't grapple with the situation of, do I need to secretly be a Christian in order to preserve my life? What profit is, my point is, there really isn't any profit for you to renounce Christ and continue to live in this life. Because... If you don't re if you re if you don't renounce Christ and they kill you for being a Christian, well then you're going to be rewarded in heavenly places for taking that stand for Christ because now you're a good example. You're an ambassador for Christ, and the greatest thing you could do for Christ is to give up your own life, and that would be a great witness to others to show how important Christ is, how serious sin is, and how how Christ's death on the cross saves us from our sins. Being a martyr for Christ is a great example of that. So if you go ahead and not renounce Christ and let them kill you for that, well then what you've done is you've gained a greater reward in heaven. And then you get to experience that sooner. But if you decide to preserve your own life and be a Christian secretly, then now you don't get rewarded for that you lose that reward uh, you get to live longer in this life but now you're going to be in misery over what you just did and uh, you're going to have to keep denying Christ it's not going to be a one time thing I mean they're going to keep pounding you and making you try to you know until you relent or you just get so hardened against Christ that you just keep denying him and then that's just going to like I said just make it worse with inner turmoil and then you're going to lose your reward in heavenly places so it's better to just go ahead and not be a secret Christian, but to let people know. Now, at the same time, you don't want to get in a situation intentionally where you get killed. 
I mean, there can be a pride in that to say, yeah, you know, Stephen was the first Christian martyr, and I want to be just like Stephen, and then my name will go down in history books. You know, like I mentioned John Wycliffe or John Huss or Martin Luther or William Tyndale. Uh, they've been dead five, six hundred years. Oh, the reason I know their names is because they were killed for the cause of Christ. Um, and so there can be some fame among uh, churchianity for you to be a martyr for Christ. And we should not seek that because that's just a fleshly thing to say, oh, look at how great I am. I'm such a strong Christian that I was killed for Christ. Uh, it's an exal exaltation of the flesh when you're doing it that way. So you don't want to go out when they make a pronouncement and say, you know, you're going to be killed for being a Christian. You don't want to go out and just boldly be out there and intentionally get arrested and killed um, because then you're not as an effective witness. If you, if you um, wait, I mean, they're going to catch you eventually, <laughs> uh, but you'll have more opportunity to share Christ with others. And so don't be ashamed of Christ, but at the same time, don't go out there and seek for uh, to be a martyr so that you go down in the history books as some great Christian. Um, you just simply want to continue to be an ambassador for Christ. Peter says in the book of Acts, we ought to obey God rather than man. And so that's how you should approach it, is that you're going to... Uh, allow Christ to live within you when you have the opportunities you'll share the gospel and you'll share sound doctrine so people can come into the knowledge of the truth you don't shy away from it but at the same time you don't go around seeking to be killed you may say well what about Daniel there's a proclamation there in Daniel chapter 6 that you can only worship the king and if you do anything else you'd be thrown into the den of lions and, and when Daniel knew that that was the case, he opened up his windows and prayed three times a day toward Jerusalem. And so then he, you know, he could have gotten in the closet. You know, why did he, why did he go out there and get out in the open like that? Well, Daniel's a little different because in that case, God dwelt in the temple. God did not dwell in, inside a human person. Once Acts 2 comes, the Holy Ghost comes. And now you are the temple of the, of the Holy Ghost, 1 Corinthians 6 says. Uh, so you don't have to open the windows and all this that Daniel did because you've got the Holy Ghost within you. So you can pray secretly. The reason Daniel uh, opened up the windows toward Jerusalem and prayed three times a day, first off, Daniel 6 says that was according as he'd always did. So he didn't do anything special so he could be a Christian martyr and be thrown into the den of lions and show how much he loves Christ. So he didn't do anything special. Also, um, the reason he did it is because Solomon prayed, and it's recorded there in Kings and in Chronicles, when he dedicated the temple, that when, they, when Israel was taken off into captivity for their sins, then uh, if they pray toward that temple, then God uh, should hear their prayer. God said he would hear their prayer and forgive them. And so Daniel, by opening up the windows and praying toward Jerusalem, was obeying God when he says, if you want to be forgiven, then you need to pray toward me. And since God is not dwelling within you, he's in a temple, you need to pray toward Jerusalem. So uh, Daniel wasn't doing that to be bold and show everybody what a good Christian he is. He was doing it as a com uh, obeying the commandment of God. So if you had a similar thing that happened today, you shouldn't just go around and say, oh yeah, I'm going to be a martyr for Christ. I'm going to make sure everybody knows that I'm still praying. I'm going to be bold in the faith. Now, you just continue to do what you were doing and yeah, be smart about it. Um, try not to get into trouble with the authorities so that you have more of an opportunity to share Christ with others. But at the same time, if you are caught and they want to kill you, if you won't renounce the you trust in Jesus death as atonement for your sin then you need to just go ahead and say no I'm not doing that and then you got the opportunity to share the gospel right there 
you can say all have sinned and come short of the glory of God that includes me I know that Christ died for my sins and I'm trusting in him he is the only way the truth and the life no man comes unto God but by the Lord Jesus Christ and so I'm trusting in his death burial and resurrection and by that I have confidence that I'll have eternal life in heaven so I don't want you to kill me um, I ask that you spare my life but at the same time I'm not going to renounce Christ because that is the only way I can have eternal life if I don't trust in Jesus death as atonement for my sin I'm gonna burn forever in a lake of fire and so whatever punishment you do to me on this earth torture or kill me or whatever you do um, is gonna be a, a lot less severe than if I'm burning in hell and Revelation 14 says the smoke of their torment for those who burn up in hell ascendeth up forever and so whatever you do to me is gonna be a lot less worse than what's in hell therefore I am going to try I trust in Jesus death alone as atonement for my sin and I will not renounce him so that's something that you can do um, you know if push comes to shove and then they end up killing you or torturing you and then to to die is gain it's better to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord so then you get to be go with the Lord but if it doesn't come down to that uh, don't get your don't get into that situation Jesus told his disciples you are to be um, harm uh, wise as scorpions and harmless as doves so you want to be wise and stealth about it so that you um, you don't try to get arrested or try to get tortured or killed for being a believer uh, but at the same time you don't want to um, renounce Christ so uh, don't go looking for don't go looking for death or torture um, so, but at the same time, don't be a secret Christian because then you're not going to uh, be a good ambassador for Christ. And then uh, you end up losing your reward in heavenly places. I mean, if you've got your affection, Colossians 3 says, set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. And so you just simply live as Christ would have you to live. Uh, getting those opportunities to share the gospel and uh, sh sound doctrine, sharing those when you have the chance, and then um, and don't be a secret Christian, but at the same time, don't seek out to be a Christian martyr. And then that way you have more of an opportunity to share the gospel for people to be saved. And, um, and then if there is a time when you have to give up your life for Christ, uh, then you'll be rewarded for it and uh, you'll be in a better place anyway whereas if you deny Christ you'll feel bad about it you won't get rewarded people won't be saved and then you're gonna have to keep denying him because it's just not gonna stop they're not just gonna take one denial and say okay go ahead and live your Christian life now um, you know <laughs> you're gonna have to continue denying him so thanks for watching